and welcome to SCAN, a show brought to you by SCAN, the Social Community Activities Network. We are located in the lower level of Monmouth Mall. SCAN is dedicated to helping active adults stay active, empowered, and inspired. I'm your host, Tracy Wolfman. I am the CEO of We Care Adult Care, an adult day care center in Middletown, and I am also vice president on the board of SCAN here at Monmouth Mall. I'd like to welcome my guests today, Agatha Ballett and Geraldine Weinberg. Agatha is the founder and of Atlantic Fencing Academy in Tinton Falls. She is joined by one of her students, as I said, Geraldine Weinberg. And our topic today is fencing. Fencing is really not that visible, though it is an Olympic sport, and we're going to get an education on the great benefits of it, exercise, and how we can all become uh, Olympians, maybe? Geraldine, are you Let's going to just say yet? a fencer. So, There's always a possibility when you reach out. I okay. like the competition. So welcome to our show, Welcome to SCAN. I just want to give you a little background information on our um, guest today. Agatha Ballard is the founder and head coach of the Atlantic Fencing Academy. The club was established in 1999, which is quite a long time ago. Well, you need more exposure, because I didn't know about it. Yeah. She is one of the oldest and largest fencing clubs in the state of New Jersey. Her journey of fencing started back in Budapest, Hungary, the daughter of Maja Naria, five-time, five-time world champion and Olympic silver medalist. She has spent her entire life with fencing. She has met fencers from all over the world and has been fortunate to have opportunities to bout fence with champions and legends and learn from the famous fencing masters. Boy, do we have the queen of the topic here today. No, no, no. I'm like, <laughs> Agatha is multilingual, trained in management, specialized in hotels and export-import business. She is a certified personal trainer, former marathon runner. She coached hundreds of fencers in all three weapons, foil, epi, and saber. Only way I can pronounce that is because I watched a video to have that clarification. Perfect. Um, she did that from the age of f five to 75. Yeah. Her fencers reached numerous national finals and stood on the top of the podium. Besides managing the club and coaching, Agatha actively fencing nationally and internationally. And at the 218 Fencing Veteran World Championship in Italy, she earned a bronze medal in her category from 60 to 69. I am just so impressed by all of this. Agatha, with the help of members of the Atlantic Fencing Company, has given many presentations, demonstrations of fencing to various groups, um, like clubs, Cub Scouts, Boy and Girl Scouts, schools, recreational, senior programs, and general audience. Her mission is to spread the word, gain more and more fans to the sport. Fencing is a lifestyle. And for our audience at home, never too late to start. So we are going to learn about fencing today. Um, one of Agatha's students, Geraldine, is here to tell us that she started later in life. Yes. And is loving fencing as a new hobby. So welcome, Agatha and Geraldine. Thank you very Thank much. You for what us. an impressive resume, and I can't believe I'm sitting next to a world Olympian. It's just... My mother was Olympian. You, okay, <laughs> so your mother was the world Olympian, but all the um, education and exposure on fencing that you were able to gain from her knowledge. Yes, I grew up among the best fencers because in the 60s, 70s, Hungary, 50s, 60s, 70s, Hungary was one of the power fencer nations. In uh, fencing, the modern fencing started in Europe. Okay. Uh, the first uh, countries, it was Italy, Fran Spain, Italy, France, then Hungary, who became dominant in the world stage. Yeah. Uh, then in the 70s and 80s, fencing started to spread all over the world. And that's how it came and to United States and also because of the enthusiasm that 
time, even though it was a small crowd, mm -hmm. they produced wonderful fencers. The first American Olympic gold medalist in fencing was a woman, Mariel Zagunis, at the Athene Olympics. And after oh. that, children have seen what possibilities are there in fencing, and it started to evolve. evolve yes. That is wonderful. So why do they call fencing a three-dimensional chess? Because fencing is not just a physical activity, physical moves. Uh, fencing involves the basic, which is the footwork. You have to move on the strip because your arm is only so long as it is. Right. So your leg has to take you closer to the opponent. Then you have a weapon, we call them weapon, the epi, foil, or saber, in your hand and you have to acquire a technique for that, how to give touches and how you defend yourself. Now when you have that a little bit, then you start to pay attention to your opponent and try to figure out how you can win against them, how you right. can build a strategy, and sometimes it goes one or two steps ahead and you're waiting for a good moment and then you execute your action and hopefully it will be a touch. That is Amazing. Since we're talking about the weapons, and just so our audience at home can see a little bit, do you want to tell us what this um, yes um, accumulation of I've equipment here? I gladly. I bought two uh, weapons here because our scan participants they fenced with these two, and uh, everybody has their preference of weapon, mm -hmm. they should do what they love. So one weapon is the saber. The saber is a so-called slashing or cutting weapon. We are doing little tapping moves on the target. Everything is valid target above the hip line. Because think about saber developed from the cavalry. Right. Came. People didn't want it to hit the horses. So only they strike above the hip line. Above the hip Head, line. Head, arm, mm. body. So it's a very light weapon and is a lot of fun. I'm not saying the other one's not, but it right. has, everything has their characteristic. The other weapon which is very popular with um, I can see the difference seniors, now. This is a thrusting weapon. Thrusting weapon means that when you are pushing it forward, mm -hmm. you are making a touch. And as you see, you have a big guard here, which is blocks your arm and protects it. Protecting, what I mean is, you don't want that they hit you there. Right. So this, you hide behind this guard, and as you push it forward, you try to give the touches. The interesting part of this weapon that the whole body is a target, head to toe. I can hit you everywhere. Not to mention, and it makes it difficult, if two fencers hit the same time, mm -hmm. both fencers receive a point. Oh. Now you have to figure out how you give one without getting one. Contrary to the saber, because in the saber, it, we call this weapon, similar like the foil, a priority weapon. If I start an attack right. and both fans are hit the same time, I will receive the point because I have the priority, the right of way to hit. To hit. Okay. And then we have gloves and we have helmets. Yes. Uh, the basic fencing equipment, which we call whites, mm -hmm is for all fencers are the same. Okay. In a pay, we are using just normal masks. To protect our face. To protect, and it's very strong. Fencing is a very safe sport. You're gonna put and that on for us? I think it's a little too small this oh, way. Oh, okay, <laughs> don't worry. And as you see, the glove, when you put it on, it covers, should cover your um. closing as well. Okay. Very well protected. Now. The also the foil is almost the same, the same as the glove. If you hit on this mask, mm -hmm. the scoring machine will pick it up and it shows a valid touch. Oh. So 
it is it, when you fence a pay, you have to protect everything. You have to protect. In saber, as I mentioned, the head is also a target, and the arm is also a target. This mask is, as you see, it's not insulated. It is all metal. So airflow can get in. Not, not the, not that. What I mean is, when the blade touches the mask, oh, it I will see. connect, and the scoring machine shows a touch. This fencers also saber fencers also wear a metallic little jacket, very very fine woven jacket. Okay. So everything is above heat is conductive. That's what it picks uh, the weapon picks yeah. up. In the glove, as you see, a little bit different because this is not a target, but from here on, everything it is, is a target. a target. When you are putting on the complete fencing equipment, only your left hand, in case you are left-handed, the right hand, right. where you can see skin. Otherwise, you are completely Covered. protected by equipment. So it's interesting, um, as we're learning these new things and our audience with us, you're teaching this class at SCAN, but uh, in your facility in Tinton Falls. And there are benefits for exercise? A lot of benefits has the fencing uh, for seniors. First, I would like to mention that in fencing, senior means an open category. We oh, that's good. We like that, right, <laughs> Geraldine? Yes. We call Absolutely. who is fencing in the veteran age category, 40 to 50, 49, 50 to 59, 60 to 69, and 70 and up. Okay. They are starting to bring in, and they talk about, they bring in a category 80 and up fencers. That's because we're all going to live to 100. And it's Absolutely. fantastic to see an international tournament because you see young 50 years old and 80 some years old fencers. That it, is really great. Now in the facility uh, in uh, Tinton Falls, we have 11 competition side, Olympic size fencing strips and all equipped with electric scoring machine. So it's very oh, okay. easy for the fencers to tie in on these elect, uh, scoring system so they can follow if they hit, they give a touch or they receive a touch okay. because it shows. And this brings uh, to the one of the interesting aspect of fencing for veterans that they have to pay attention so much on the fencing and to their opponents and what the strategy that they forget about the physical activity. That they're getting while they're doing it. They don't notice it. Okay, afterwards maybe they f <laughs> feel it a little bit. We'll come <laughs> back and talk about that. And I want to also talk mm -hmm. about um, Geraldine and how you like taking the class because you said it's a first time class for you, yes? Yes, but it was something that I always wanted to try, and I had seen various advertisements for Agatha's Fencing Academy from the time she was in Colts Neck, I believe. Yes. All right. We so when we there. come back, we're going to take a short break right now, and when we come back, I want you to tell us how your first day of class was when you went to take your fencing. It's so Good. inspirational that you started this later on, and you fulfilled that dream. But I'm a freshman senior. Good for you. <laughs> We're going to take a short break here on Welcome to Scan. We'll return with more important information for you right after these brief messages. So, if you're over 65, like me, and active and fairly healthy, being active and healthy alone will not protect you. Remember, the immune system weakens with age. And if you're over 65, ask your doctor about your vaccination options. We want you to be healthy and active. Thank you for uh, staying with us today, viewers. We are back for the second half of Welcome to Scan. And my special guest here is Agatha. 
Ballot, founder of Atlantic Fencing Academy in Tinton Falls, and one of her students, Gerald Dean Weinberg. So thank you both for coming. We've learned so much on the first half, knew nothing about fencing, so I'm happy to um, have this opportunity. And Geraldine, mm -hmm. the question is, since we are hosting this class at SCAN, and that's how you started to take it, um, and you explained to us that it was something you always wanted to do, so you jumped in, signed up for the class. Yes. What was it like on that first day going to class? Because you had no knowledge of fencing, did you? No, just from what I've seen on television or what I've read. And the Olympics. And the Olympics. Okay. So tell us but, what it was just like walking in that first day so our viewer audience can know that it is doable. Something maybe we all should try, yes? It was exciting. Agatha made it, made it exciting because she started to explain to us everything that she just explained about the different swords and the equipment okay. and the background of fencing. And then she explained the equipment and how you go about it. She made it so interactive. The first day we jumped right into it. We were all suited up as we were fencing. I was a bit How'd you feel in that suit? I felt like a fencer. Oh, that's... <laughs> I lo and then I picked up from there. We started with Epee and Sabre. I like Epee as a senior. I call myself a freshman senior. Okay. I like Epee. It's, I like the thrust. Right. With the, with the Sabre, you're doing a slashing. So I find it more, I don't like the heavy clothes. Some of the, uh, the rest of the class did. Okay. I intend to go forward with it. It's something I always aspired to do. And I've already instructed a friend of mine who's given up her fencing years ago, and she's going to start. So scan here at the Mammoth Mall is, we try to um, have an array of classes for all of our people to explore these new opportunities that we have as we age or we reinvent ourselves right. or for all the things that we never did and we want to try. And this is certainly something being brought to light. I think it's a great opportunity for people in the community, our active seniors that um, belong to SCAN and those that will soon belong to SCAN. So Agatha, tell us, we talked about the veteran age group. Why is it a delight for coaches to teach veteran fencers? Uh, for a coach, always um, a great pleasure to teach somebody who wants to learn. And seniors, veterans, they are coming there because they are looking for something and they really want to work for it and learn it. We understand as a coaches that veteran fencers, seniors, have different um, bodies, different dispositions than youth fencers, mm -hmm. but we know how to make it interesting for them. And if we get the feedback that they like it, the more we want to give. Right, I'm sure. Now, are you the only instructor at your facility or no. do you have others? No, we have uh, three other instructors at the moment. And a little bit we are specializing, uh, although all of three of us can fence all three we teach all three weapons. Okay. But one of our coach, James Carpenter, who was a Atlanta Olympic participant. Wow. Presently he's the head coach of the Stevens Institute of uh, Technology. He is our EPE head coach. And we have Fraser Ward from the island of Guernsey, uh, who is our who was member of the British national team and he's teaching the saber. So yeah. it seems to me from our conversation that all these teachers are past Olympians. Not always. I am not no, an not Olympian, always, but, but no, I was I, very lucky. I'm really lucky because my coaches who stayed with me more than 10 years, right. uh, Fraser is younger, but they, we just have a family there. But a lot of sports, you know, we just have instructors, you know, with, they're always good, but they don't have the vast experience and knowledge that obviously you're promoting to them during their fencing classes because these people are experts in this. They have really a base knowledge about fencing. What is difficult a little bit, how to teach 
all kind of people. Right. We have five years old fencers mm -hmm. and we have 78 years old fencers. In all three weapons, we have fencers who wants to be want to be champions, want to be hopefully Olympia. veteran world champions. Yes. And the other fencers just fence for recreational, so we always adjust for those who we are teaching. But definitely the experience. And it's also, it's very obvious that it's such a passion of yours. Oh, yes. And <laughs> yes. Mo, I could say that as Agatha's student, yes, I could see her passion. And that's part of the allure of going in there my first day, as well as I would believe that it's a professional setup with the mats, with the electronic scoring. That's what you get when you walk in the door and what she shows you on the first day. And right. You want, you, it excites you. Exactly. Exactly and what you're coming to. you can to. do this. Why, let's tell our audience a little bit why it's a good recreational sport. What are the benefits? Besides, uh, I can say from the short time that you've mind, body, and spirit already, right? It's definitely, it's because of fencing, um, I always try to explain it, it has three legs. One is the physical, one is the technical, and one is the mental. Okay. Very seldom people are born with all the three uh, talent. But because the sport is so complex, if you have one weakness, if you put attention to it that you want to improve that, mm -hmm. you will be good at that. It's fencing is everything is perseverance. You mm -hmm. cannot learn it very fast. Okay, so. Cannot learn it, you have to invest time and a little sweat. But Which then. Which is good, we all need to sweat and. But when you have the basic idea Mm -hmm. what you are doing at that point it opens up for you because fencers we call it open bouting time they take advantage of that which means anybody in our club comes down and they can fence with everybody so, oh, so it doesn't matter your level doesn't matter a veteran fencer mm -hmm. can fence a 10 years old a high school fencer who is physically very good can fence with a veteran again because we know how to fence each other and everybody can learn from each other. Right. There is always something, we never give up learning as fencers. It's a, it's a lifelong, lifelong learning. journey. And this is comes in, which attracts veterans, seniors, mm -hmm. because it's always something different. Always there is no different. same two days in the club when you step in and you didn't discover something and you wouldn't adjust your technique, you would wouldn't adjust your footwork, you'd find new moves, not new moves, but how to implement the new move. Okay. And this makes it much more appealing for those who already tried a couple of other activities which is could be after a while monotonous right and they get a little boring That's Geraldine true. how long have you been doing this for the fencing now I just finished my first semester okay and how and long was that class it was for six weeks and it was a good entry into the sport so you never did the sport you've completed six weeks now do you feel that you have a good knowledge base after that six weeks Definitely. Uh, I plan to continue. Yes, it was something I, what I wanted to do. You told and us. And I will continue with it. So and for I, our viewers, if they wanted, they can get a good foundation in six weeks, which isn't a long term, and then you spend the rest of your time perfecting yourself. The, the, what is very good with seniors that Geraldine did for six weeks. We put in about 10 hours all together. She got a very good understanding, how does it work? Maybe mm -hmm. she cannot execute yet, but she can retain those information. Right, and she can practice, right? And then the retained information, he, she can always grab back and go forward, I want to improve this, right. I want to do that. And it's learning the strategy. Yesterday at, at class, Agatha, we formed into teams, and I could feel my competitive <laughs> spirit coming no, out. Oh, it was coming out. That came out, and I said, okay, this I like. This I, I want to go forward with. 
So you you like to be competitive, and it sounds like fencing can fulfill that. Well, I was a ki I did kickboxing for years, and I lost my coach, so okay. I needed something else. You needed a new activity. Exactly, and it's also I think as we age, you also need with Aga talking about the strategies. So you're using your mind for your strategies. Correct. Where are you going to go? Where are you? How are you going to faint with the move? How to execute? I got to spend time with me yesterday because I tend not to stab enough. <laughs> the thrust, rather. Thrust. The thrust is the word. <laughs> so you, you learn the vocabulary and the strategy. So there are a lot of things come into play, which as a freshman senior, you want to get involved in. Right. Well, the thing is today, and on previous episodes here, we've talked about brain health. So when you think about strategizing, you're using your brain to create new neurons to execute something new. That's correct. Which is, uh, you know, a very beneficial um, new uh, hobby that you're taking because you're getting more out of it than you would ever imagine. Correct. The, the, it's not just, yes, you're picking up and you have to think. Right. And, you, you, and that's what we all need to do today, think. <laughs> It's yes. part of it, and a lot of recreational fencers start it like that because of these benefits, and they slowly evolve into competitive fencers. That's the nice thing of it, because it's a very social sport, fencing. Oh, okay. Very well, social. Well, you had um, said that something, once you get your friends involved, it becomes a very social sport. And then at the beginning, you are only with the club, with friends, uh -huh. and then you go to a little competition, then you meet other fencers, then you go out maybe a national competition, and you need see national fencers from all over the United States, even some international fencers, and make friendship for a life. Uh -huh. Well, we've learned so much here today, and I hope our viewers at home have learned something. It has enticed you to go check out Atlantic Fencing in Tinton Falls that Agatha is the founder of. And maybe you'll see Geraldine practicing all her new moves, right? Most definitely. <laughs> so I want to thank you so much for tuning in to Welcome to Scan today. I hope that you learned and you enjoyed some helpful tips. Now it's your turn. We'd love to hear from you and what's on your mind. Call SCAN at 732-542-1326. Check in for other shows that we may be having, and if you have something you want to learn about, you can certainly tell us. Until next time, we'll see you on Welcome to SCAN. Thank you for watching.